and then somehow slipped and told me one day. And then what do I have to do? I don't like for people to have to find out that it was all a delusion. I calculate the amount of time before that they can rise up. <laughs> and then I put myself into that type of a high gear and I make it. Now, where on earth could I be motivated like that? Well, I've achieved some goals on my own. I would have said, forget it. There's no actual reason or purpose. Life's too short to spend yourself in such a way. I mean, forget it. When along comes a female role and says, I knew all along you'd do that. Here, I hadn't even done it. I already decided to forget it. <laughs> I turn right around and go out and do it before they find out I haven't done it. All right, let's move on. The next function of the female is to listen. And I think if you've got a daughter, you should go home and teach her this one point strongly. The most important thing for that girl to do when she's dating is not to talk. She'll have enough times to talk the rest of her life. She should be listening. If you're in a parked car, and if you're loving, will she hear anything but sighs anyway? Will it do her any good to listen? In other words, if we were to actually examine the amount of time spent in courtship and the different activities that are pursued in that courtship, have I selected tonight for an illustration probably the major one? Is it any wonder then after marriage she wonders who he is? Because, I'll tell you a secret, while you're kissing him, he can't talk. What do you have to listen to? Most girls end up marrying the wrong guy because they never listened to him until after they were married. Whereas courtship is not for making love. There's not the conveniences for it. Just ask yourself, what do you prefer, a bed or a car? In other words, we're saying courtship is for what? Listening. In other words, are there not seats in the cars? You sit there and you listen, and you listen. And by the way, by the third date, if you're listening, do you know him? When does she perform the listening function, before marriage or after? After. In other words, should she arrange on dates to have situations where he talks? by the hour, get him to talk. And pretty soon you'll know, ooh, this is not the right man. <laughs> it's impossible for anybody to talk over an extended period of time without them telling you all about themselves. You say, what if they're skillful? What if they're an actor? We're not that skillful and we can't act that well. If you have a salesman come and you want to know whether he's sincere or not, I do this a lot of times with suppliers. I want to know whether they're going to take care of me or not. How do I find out? Just let them start talking and just keep listening. When they slow down a little bit, ask them another question. Then they answer that one and say, and yes. What am I doing when I say and? Well, they were going to stop. And I say and, and boy, they go right on again for another five minutes. Before long, have they told me what they're going to do? Then without me saying anything, I make up my mind. I either want a real relationship here, or I'm afraid that if we move any further in this direction, will be a contest, and I back out of it. Listening is an art. By the way, before she can perform step seven of listening, does she have to have completely learned step one? If you do not love yourself, can you afford to listen? No. If I do not love myself, I'm not going to waste a moment listening. I'm going to be doing what? Telling you what? How great I am. I'm wonderful. <clears throat> Now, if I truly love myself, do I know I'm wonderful? Do I have to prove anything to you? Then can I afford to listen? But if I'm not so sure, then I'm going to convince you and me, and we're going to spend the whole evening listening to me expound on my attributes. It's impossible in this world for a male role to talk very long without the female seeing right through the whole thing. In other words, I can interview a man, and in one hour, no matter what an, kind of an actor he's been, within one hour, I can tell you if he's rebellious or if he's submissive. If he's rebellious, do I want him? What if he knows more than everybody else I've interviewed that day? 
That's all the more reason I don't want him. What will he do with that knowledge when he gets on the job? And he's a contester. Will we say he's got his ammunition that he brought to work before I even hired him? He'll use that knowledge against me in contest on the job. It's interesting to know that if I listen continuously, would I involve myself into role relationships that I later had to break? Now I'd like for you to look tonight at American industry. What do you suppose happens to the average employee in six months? By the way, if it doesn't happen in six months, it'll happen in two years and it'll be worse. Well, ask yourself this. On the job I am now on, how many people have been there 20 years? Is it expensive to hire men, train them, fire them? Hire another one, train another one, and fire them. Are we saying that the reason for this is because the female role didn't listen when they come to work? If you're in a work situation tonight and you don't like it and you're going to have to terminate, then did you not grab the job too quick? Now, with a job, it's real easy. You can quit. But with a marriage, it's a little different story. When we're talking about marriage tonight, we're not talking about you. We're talking about you telling your children that what's the purpose of courtship? I haven't got a daughter yet, but I'm going to have one in about two months <laughs> to go with my three sons. And I'm going to teach her that courtship is for listening. By the way, I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to teach her what to listen for. <laughs> and the minute she hears any renunciation of responsibility, then I'm going to tell her that's the one to forget. And then she'll go on to the next one. In other words, the dating process will be to find someone who will actually assume the male role completely. Now, listening is very important because the next step is to choose one. The female always has to choose one. No, this means if there's a certain supplier and he calls on me and I listen to him, another supplier calls on me and I listen to him, another supplier calls on me and I listen to him, I'm listening for what? I'm going to pick one supplier who's going to satisfy all my needs. In other words, do I want one that'll take care of me, one that'll make things right, one that'll rush shipments to me, do I want a supplier that'll even lose money if he has to, if I get in a jam to pull me out of it? This is exactly what I'm looking for. So as I listen, I'm going to choose one. Now, if I don't choose one and trust him, let's assume I'm going to choose all three. Then it's real simple. I say, all right, well, all you guys give me bids. I've done what? Have I set myself up in contest against three suppliers? Now, can I expect any one of those three to take care of me? No, they're going to finagle out. Now, how in the world can we get around this guy? He's, he, first of all, he's cheating by getting three bids. And he's, he's secret. We don't know what the other guys are bidding. It isn't even fair fight. But we're going to have to fight because we're hungry. So we submit our bid. Sure enough, we get the lowest bid. Now we know what? We must be going to lose our shirt because two other guys figured it higher. So what are we going to do all the time we're doing this job? We're going to cut those corners and we're going to come out ahead of the guy that had the next bid. In other words, we're not going to lose on this guy. So what are you going to do out there during the time they're working? You're going to be watching? Have we set up a contest? You might do it if that's the only job you had to do. But what if you ended up with 100 suppliers? In other words, the minute you start increasing in success, do you have time to contest? No. You only have time to find out who you can submit to, and then do you trust that person to take care of all your needs? Completely. And this is the only way you're going to survive. In other words, I quit wasting time shopping. And it's impossible for me to have a male role take care of me until I choose one. Let's take a brokerage firm for an illustration. They come to list my house, and I tell them I want an open listing. This means anybody can sell the house. Will the broker work to sell my house? No, he won't waste his money. He won't waste his time. If somebody comes along and begs him to sell that house, then he might consider it. But he's still a little afraid because he's afraid I've already sold it and he's wasting his time here too. Now, he wants an exclusive right to sell. This means that I can't sell my own house if you come up and offer me money for it. 
Does the broker want you to choose one? He wants you to so choose one to the exclusion of who? Including yourself. This is what we mean by exclusion. In other words, he wants to make sure you have chosen one. A doctor does the same thing. They want to make sure that there's only one person that's responsible, and then they give everything. Now, could you expect the male role to give everything if you haven't chosen one? Could I expect a supplier to go out of their way to take care of me, to lose money on this particular deal, if I hadn't have chosen them alone? It's interesting then, if the female doesn't choose one, does she have anybody to take care of her? No. Then does she have to take care of herself? In other words, if I get three bids, then I've got to do more than just three bids. I've got to be there every minute. I've got to watch everything they do because who's taking care of me? I am. <laughs> and furthermore, they're doing more than not taking care of me. They're trying to do what? take care of themselves at my expense. After all, they bid so low, they're afraid they're going to lose their shirt on this job. Their motivation is to cut every corner they possibly can so they can survive. What's my motive? I'm out there watching, make sure they don't cut any corners. Is it really a good idea to buy price? No, normally when you buy price, you end up paying more. Normally, it's the most expensive way to go. Now, choosing one is essential because there's no consenting to the five S's until you have chosen one. Now, when I choose one supplier, then can I consent? Let's assume now it's a mechanic. Can I drive my car in, tell them to do whatever they want to to fix it up? It almost sounds reckless, doesn't it? I really can. I can say, whatever it takes, fix it, and I'm going to do something else, and I'll be back to pick it up. In other words, I know full well that I can trust them. Now, when we consent, which is step number nine, we consent to total submission. Now, this is an interesting thing. When I consent, I give up everything there is of me. I give up every right in my being. In fact, I do even more than that. I search for all the rights that I possibly have and I kill them. Do I want them? No, not at all. In other words, I do not want rights. If I start collecting my rights, will the male role take care of me? No, because the minute I set up an array of rights, does he have to defend himself against my rights? We are in complete subjection to everything the male does. We surrender totally in every respect. We play the role of a servant. We are subservient and we are subordinate. In other words, we are under the male role. Now, when we give the five S's totally, then we say we've done step nine. Total submission is actually consenting to be under the male role. Now, submission is beautiful. Submission that produces within a person a quality of character that the only word I can possibly think of to describe it is beautiful. Now, how does a lady become beautiful? In other words, does she give up everything? And I know the first reaction you have to this is this is dangerous. I will lose everything. And some women like to think the fact, where's my identity now? What's going to become of me? And about this time you might panic and run back to contest and be destroyed. But if you're brave, you can go one step further and find true womanhood. And we might make it very clear tonight, the only way that you will have true womanhood is through submission. I know of no other way to do it. There's no shortcuts, there's no other way. We have to go this route, and you have to have power in order to live. So the only avenue for power in my life is total submission to my head. So strength comes from submission. And it's interesting to know it is a beautiful kind of strength, though. It's something to be desired, something to search after. 
The next thing that happens to me after I give up everything, and when I think that I'm totally gone, is to find out that I'm a brand new person. And to find out I haven't lost a thing, and I have gained everything. Every lady here tonight that's married, did you not do this? No, you wouldn't necessarily have to. Is it possible to be married for 30 years and not submit? Mm -hmm. I would say, though, tonight that if you did find yourself in a situation where you have chosen one and you haven't consented, what's the best thing you can do at the first opportunity? And the first opportunity, by the way, is the next second. Just tell yourself, I don't know what in the world I've been carrying on a warfare for. It's cost me everything I wanted. So right now, without another ado, I surrender totally. You don't even have to tell him. He'll feel it. Even walking home tonight, he'll feel it. Now, what will he do if he knows that you've consented? Well, first of all, he'll grow up. And secondly, he'll take care of you. Did you know that? words, why should a man open a car door for a lady if she's out to take care of herself in every respect? Why not have her open a car door for you? Is there any reason to bring her flowers? No, in other words, why treat somebody nice who's fighting with you? In other words, you're so occupied to make sure you make the right move so they don't take advantage of you. Then why would you do anything nice for them? You wouldn't. So we say then, for me to play the female role, I should consent. And this consenting that I'm doing, how complete should I make it? If you're here tonight, <coughs> married, should you hang on to one single right of divorce? Isn't it interesting how we can be talking long and at once, just turn around and give a question right at home? Should you give up all rights? In other words, would this solve a lot of problems in your marriage if your husband knew that you didn't have the right for divorce anymore? You say, well, I wouldn't give up that one. He might be mean. Let me tell you something. If you don't give it up, he will be. We're saying then tonight, if I give up every single right, will this make the male role good? This is what does it. What if you go home and you say, well, I agree with almost everything he said tonight, but Here's three rights I'm not going to give up. I hope you understand I have a certain disposition, certain temperament. You know the way I'm made, and I have to have these three rights. If this is your attitude, what will happen to your marriage? For those three rights that you set up, what will he do? Will he not set up a defense approach to protect himself? And in the process of doing this, will he not take care of you? In other words, that will be the end of your hero. Your knight on the white horse won't come. I think we can look at it a completely different way. I'll give you a definition of hell and a definition of heaven. Hell is two people. Heaven is one person. That's simple enough, isn't it? Let me define tonight what heaven is. You've heard the song, My Blue Heaven? Well, I'll tell you what made that My Blue Heaven. There was only one person there. Now, I know you heard in the song that says, and baby makes three, but remember, baby makes one. I'm going to go through this and let me show you exactly what I mean. Originally, in the beginning, there was God, and that was heaven. We added two people, and we added Lucifer, and we got hell. Now, with Jesus Christ, we have how many people? Let you think for a moment. One. Now, this is beautiful. So do you still have heaven? All right, now, if the husband is in perfect agreement with God, is there one? All right, now, what's the wife have to do when this guy marries her? Now, what are we going to have to do to have heaven? I mean, we don't want to have hell, do we? All right, now, watch this. What happens to her name? I mean, we got it right in form. What did all you lovely ladies do with your precious name when you got married? 
It was the one you've cherished all of your life. Didn't you write it thousands of times? Didn't you have a special way to write it? Probably without anyone looking occasionally. Have you tried writing it again just to see how it looks? <laughs> how many here, since you were married, secretly wrote your maiden name just to see how it looks? Can I see your hands? <laughs> see? All right, why did you give up your name? Let's get down to the basics of what it takes to have heaven on earth. You gave up your name because you were supposed to do what with your total self? Submit. Well, it's going to be more than submit now. We're getting in a little deeper. Become one, all right? Now, this is interesting. Who's one? The male, she says. I'm glad a lady said this. <laughs> in other words, we're going to say, in a home, for me to have heaven on earth, I can only have one person because if I have two people, I have hell. Now, what do you suppose we have in most American homes tonight? Two people? Well, six, that's worse than hell. Uh, now, if you have two people in a home, then what do you expect to have? Two opinions? All right, now, I mean, I got two opinions. I'm going to have two ways to do things. In other words, every time we come to a new issue, we're going to have to discuss the thing again, aren't we? Now, if you're nice and civil, you call it a discussion. But in a discussion, one person wins and one person loses. In a perfect marriage, you don't discuss. It's going to go contrary to some of you, and if it does, just remember my purple dye and look at your hand. Then you'll realize, well, that's what's wrong. In other words, I've had the wrong idea too long. Now, if I want heaven, I'm going to have to have one person. This is according to my definition, one person. This means when she marries him, she dies. To me, there's only one kind of marriage that's going to work, and that's death. Now, this is not too far off because those of you with a Christian faith, when you become a Christian, what's God expect of you? In other words, is there a death process? Now, why does there have to be death? If you didn't die, now watch this real close, and they took you to heaven, what would you do to heaven? Watch this real close now, don't get away from me. Would we put two people in heaven, and what would we do to heaven? Hell. Now, do you know why Christians are all the time talking about dying? I've known a lot of Christians, and they don't ever accept the concept of death until they get it this way. Once they understand it this way, they say, oh, well, that's wonderful. I don't want to go to hell. So in order to keep heaven heaven, you don't take two people there. By the way, there's already one there, isn't there? Because he was there before you come along. Now, let's come back to marriage again. When you come into the marriage, you give up your name, which is symbolic of giving up yourself Totally. By the way, maybe some of you ladies wouldn't have become married if you'd have known this. But since you're already married, there's nothing you can do about it now. I might as well <laughs> go along with the system. Now, if you give up everything that's you, it says, very simple, that he that loseth his life, what will happen to him? He'll find it. Now, the average American woman has got the other half of the scripture verse. It says, he that findeth his life, and what's the typical American doing tonight in her home? Mm -hmm. Trying to find her life by defining her rights? Is this not true? And in the process of this endeavor of struggling, is she destroying herself? Right, so we put her on tranquilizers, and that's the same as putting you on ice and holding you in bay for a while until we come at it at a different angle trying to resolve a conflict. Now, wouldn't it be beautiful if she could just come up to the marriage situation and say, I'm through, I'm dead, and now I'm only gonna live for what purpose? To satisfy the whims, the desires, the opinions, the wishes, and the wants of her husband. Now, how many opinions are there in the house? Watch this real close and you'll see something beautiful. I'm trying to show you that she really wants what from now on? To please him, so therefore she wants what he wants. So how many people do we have? One, and do we have heaven? Right now, when Junior comes along, what have you got to do? Have you ever heard of a situation where they had heaven until they got the child? Now, how can a child turn your heaven into hell? The same way Lucifer messed up the works. If he becomes a separate person, then do we have two people again? And then we ruined it. So what should you do the first two years of that child's life? 
teach him. And by the way, the mother and the father should do this night and day. You teach him that there's only one in this household, and that's the father. We are all carbon copies, rubber stamps. You can go right down the line, puppets, whatever you want to call all these other bad words, line them all up. By the way, if a girl knew this, would she be back to that point of listening? Would she listen a little more if she knew that all of her children are going to be puppets of this one? <laughs> and by the way, even though you think you're going to remake him, those puppets will come along before you get a chance. So instead of remaking one, you've got a dozen more to remake. All right, now, if each child becomes one, can I keep heaven? All right, now, what if some of those kids become separate people? All right, let me tell you what happens. When I add two people, I have hell. When I add three people, my hell increases not on an arithmetic progression, but on a geometric progression. Now, if you want to, some of you ladies can go home and ask your husbands to figure out six on a geometric progression, and you'll know why you're tired at night. All right, now, let's go to a work situation. What if I hire an employee? And I say, would you do it this way? And I go around, do something else, and I come back a little later, and he did it the opposite. I said, didn't I tell you to do it this way? He said, yes, but my way's better. Is that hell? Are you beginning to see what I mean? Do I have two people working there now? In other words, actually, what I want is to tell him to do it a certain way, and let's assume the way I'm telling him to do it is wrong. What do I want him to do? I want him to do it wrong. In other words, do I have more peace when he does it wrong than if he would do it the opposite from what I wanted to do it right? The answer is yes. In other words, the system is more important than being right. Because just as soon as he happened to do one right, he'll do the next hundred wrong, and he'll probably end up telling me that he does know more about the job than I do because he's the one that works on it all day. And pretty soon, will I even want to be the boss? I've done some management consulting work where the boss has just told me, I'm through. You know, I don't even want to work there anymore. But you see, if I have a fear that I'm going to lose, will I take the step of total submission? No. So I would say that primarily, fear stops women from going ahead into true womanhood. And I've heard him tell me, what will happen to me? Or who will take care of me? Or what about my individuality? All kinds of fears grasp them. What you've got to do is basically realize that this is the way I am made, this is what I am to do, this is my purpose for being, and jump. I wouldn't hesitate. I wouldn't try to reason it out. It won't work. There's no rhyme or reason to it at all. The whole hierarchy system's not built on reason. But it happens to be the only way we function. Now, if you plunge into total submission, you come up out of the water in perfect trust. Perfect trust is a beautiful concept. If I were to try to find the one ingredient of perfect trust that would help you to obtain perfect trust more than any other one ingredient, it would be lack of understanding. Now, when we described the male role, we said one of the responsibilities of the male role is to understand the female role.